So let me let me welcome Dr. Sriparna Saha today after in this in this uh, talk. Uh, Dr. Sriparna Saha is currently an associate professor and head of department of computer science and engineering at IIT Patna. She has authored or co-authored more than 290 papers. Her current research in, in, interests include uh, natural language processing, machine learning, information extraction, text mining, and multi-objective optimization. Her H index in uh, 30 and the total citation count for, for papers is 5252, 5, 5252, according to Google Scholar. She is associate editors of IEEE ACM transactions on computational biology and bioinformatics. Also, ACM transaction on Asian low resource language information processing, IEEE TCSS, expert system with applications, PLOS1, IEEE Internet Computing, Neurocomputing EAAI Journal. She is the recipient of the Google India Women in Engineering Award 2008. Uh, also, NASI Young Scientist Platinum Jubilee Award 2016, Bird Award, uh, Award 2016, IEI Young Engineers Award 2016 and SERB Women in Excellence Award 2018 and as well as SERB Early Career Research Award 2018. So first of all, uh, thank you Dr. Sipana Saha for taking time out and joining us here. We we'll look forward to uh, hearing from you the exciting kind of exciting work that you do in your lab and uh, please like in the audience. Over to you. Yeah, uh, thanks to many. Th First of all, uh, thank you very much for inviting me in this particular occasion and heartiest congr congratulations to you and your team members for completing successful five years. So, uh, yeah, so basically uh, today I will talk about uh, multimodal uh, information processing because in recent years, my uh, team members and basically my PhD students and also BTEC, mm -hmm. MTech students are currently working on uh, using multimodal information processing and they are applying these techniques for solving uh, different problems related to dialogue systems and the summarization. So I will briefly sure. mention about these uh, different applications where we are applying multimodal information processing for dialogue systems. So yes. uh, basically, let me start with the introduction. What do you mean by multimodality? So you know, the, our experience of the world is multimodal because whenever we have to take a decision about a particular object, we used to uh, touch the object, we used to see the object, we used to hear the sound or the feel the texture, smell odors and taste flavors. So we used to collect information from multiple sensors and then we uh, you used to take a decision. So basically yeah. our information processing is multimodal. So we are relying on multiple sensors and after taking information from multiple sensors, we are coming to a conclusion. So multimodal learning consolidates heterogeneous data from various sensors and data inputs into a single model. So our moti uh, basically based, uh, based on this real life experience, our motivation was that in many uh, real life problems, maybe we can also use heterogeneous data or we can also use data collected from multiple sensors to take a decision. So basically you can see that two problems mainly like one problem could be the emotion recognition. So uh, suppose you have to detect the emotion of a particular person. So they are in not only by uh, seeing the textual description, uh, what the uh, what is the textual description of the utterance, uh, not only by seeing that, but maybe we can also see the facial expressions, eye movements, tone, the tone of the speaker. And based on all this information, maybe we can easily understand what is the uh, communicative intention of the user and what is the basically the em emotion present in the particular utterance. So basically, you know, this, this is a kind of a multimodal scenario where we are not only relying on the textual content, but also we are uh, relying on the video and the audio signals. From the video of signals, we are trying to understand the eye movements, the facial expressions, etc. And from the audio signal, we are trying to identify the tone of the speaker. And then based on all this information, we are trying to uh, basically identify the emotion present in a particular utterance. So basically emotion detection can also can be basically framed as a, in a multimodal setup. Similarly, suppose you have to solve a summarization problem. Suppose there is a disaster event has happened and several people are tweeting. Basically they are, then they, you know, during the disaster situations, people stay connected with each other through social media platforms. So people used to tweet about their situation in the social media. So maybe we can collect those tweets and these tweets often contain multimedia content like not only text, but also some images or some videos. So maybe we can basically collect those information 
and then we can filter out the tweets into two categories informative and non informative so informative are the tweets which are important for be collected from the tweets and then we have to generate a multi like to talk about one of our recent work where we have applied multimodality for solving uh, the, the a task of dialogue uh, systems which is called the dialogue act classification so you know dialogue act classification is a part of the natural language understanding if you know the dialogue systems so the dialogue systems is having several components one is the natural language understanding then there is a dialogue manager and then then there is a natural language generation module so the natural language understanding is uh, basically uh, responsible for understanding the uh, what the user is trying to say so the use the communicative intention uh, the or the slots present in the user utterances those are extracted by the nlu module or the natural language understanding module so the dialogue act classification means to identify the communicative intention of a speaker in a dialogue conversation and it is it can be classified into different categories like we can have the question we can have statement open question or the understanding like if suppose the user is saying what kind of experience do you do you have then with the child care this is a typically example of a question i think it is really this is a kind of a statement so the you know communicative intention could be anything so uh, basically for this particular task we have used the multimodal information processing so if you see the existing literature existing works mostly rely on the textual content they only have the textual description of the utterance and based on that they are trying to identify the dialogue act but the non verbal features like the change of tone facial expressions eye movements that can also provide us more information to understand the communicative intention correctly so basically we are the first to you know, formulate this particular task in a multimodal setting and not only that we also identify our our hypothesis is also that somehow the emotion uh, of a user is very much related to the dialogue act like what is the you know, what is the emotional state of the speaker that has a substantial effect on the pragmatic content like if you see the okay sure or the er right so this uh, okay sure could be agreement or disagreement so that basically depends on the tone of the speaker the facial expressions or how the speaker is basically expressing so basically for these utterances these are kind of ambiguous utterances we can easily uh, resolve the ambiguity by seeing the other modality information like uh, information collected from the audio and video can help us in categorizing this as the uh, either agreement or the disagreement so mostly in expressive ds such as greeting thanking apologizing etc speaker's emotion can assist in recognizing the communicative intent so basically we are the first to develop uh, formulate this dialogue act classification task as a multitask classification problem where there are two task one is the emotion recognition another is the dialogue act classification so you hear our primary task is basically the dialogue act classification and the emotion recognition is a auxiliary task but the, with the help of the emotion recognition our aim is to improve the performance of the primary task that is the dialogue act classification and here we have used the multimodal information like not only the textual information but also audio and the video information and as there was no data set which was in multimodal in nature and where emotion and the dialogue act labels are present so we curated a new data set which is called the emotida and this emotida uh, is having three different modalities one is basically emo, uh, say, uh, audio video and text and this emotida data set is uh, manually annotated by uh, 42 dialog uh, by 12 dialog acts and basically this was already annotated by uh, emotion uh, emotion labels so basically there are two multimodal emotion data sets available imocap and the mail so but those data sets were not annotated with the dialog acts so in a in our particular task we have manually annotated these two data sets with 12 chosen dialog acts which are greeting question answer 
स्टेटमेंट ओपिनियन स्टेटमेंट नन ओपिनियन एपोलजी कमेंट एग्रीमेंट डिसग्रीमेंट एक्नोलेजमेंट बैक चैनल एंड अदार्स एंड दिस बेसिकली दिस इज कल्ड आवर इमोटेड डेटा सेट हुआर देर आर वन थ्री फोर वन डायडिक एंड मल्टीपार्टी कन्भार्सेशन रिजल्टिंग इन ए टोटल अफ नाइनटीन थाउजेंड थ्री हंड्रेड सिक्सटी फाइव अटेंडेंसेस एंड दिज आर एज आई मेन्शन दैट दिज आर हैविंग थ्री मोडलिटीज ऑडियो भिडियो एंड टेक्सट एंड इच अफ दिस अटेंडेंसेस इज हैविंग द डायलग एक्ट and the emotion level present so this is the distribution you can see that uh, imo cup is contributing 48% of our data set and mild is contributing 52% and this is the overall speaker distribution so then we proposed a deep learning based architecture uh, it is a multimodal multitasking based architecture uh, we are uh, there are three inputs a video text and the audio and then we have put there is a attention module we have intra modal attention and the inter task attention and then finally we are getting uh, the uh, some representations for the dialogue act and some representations for the emotion and then we are passing through a dense layer and finally we are classifying uh, into different dialogue act categories and different emotion categories so basically this is our overall architecture so we have the input processing feature representation then the attention network and then finally the classification layer so something uh, uh, i am not going into the details so for more details you can see the paper this work got accepted in acl uh, 2020 and our results basically established that yes multimodality really is helpful so you can see compared to the textual modality when we are adding video with text then we are basically getting the maximum uh, f1 score and the maximum accuracy so audio is not so helpful maybe this may be because you know we are using some uh, pretend tools to extract some audio features like open smile is a uh, pretend tool which is used to extract some audio features so basically when we have added audio features into with text plus video features there there is a drop in the performance so maybe that's why basically audio feature is not helpful but text plus video uh, are the this they perform the best and uh, they are performing better than only video and only text so this establishes that yes indeed the uh, multimodality is important uh, for solving this particular task and these are some further analysis we did some ablation studies as well and these are some heat maps so which show that when what is the importance of the emotion recognition so when we are solving the multitasking the focus is given to the correct word so you know that when we are solving this multitasking problem then the more focus is given to can't etc these me these words so basically multitasking is better compared to the single task so we also worked on the two tag classification so similar to dialogue act classification sometimes we also have to understand the speech act in tweet dr saha just apologies yeah, i'll just yeah. try to uh, stop you you can you please reshare your screen your screen is not visible i just wanted to like uh, oh my that. god <laughs> oh my no. okay i was i no. was uh, oh then uh, i was simply discussing but okay people were not able to see my screen yeah yeah can you do that again now so now you, uh, not yet i mean we were initially able to see your screen but uh, uh -huh. it just dropped then we were not able What would be the problem? I am I am sharing. Now, can um, you share, can you do that again? Reshare that again. Present to audience the button next to mic. This one now. Can you see? Uh, not yet. Uh, let me let me jo, just go back stage and then probably uh, you can try one more time. maybe some technical glitch i guess we are not able to see your screen can you just okay. close the file and just try try to try to open it again because in the, these numbers will you know they will not be able to see the content on the uh, the audience will not be able to see the content on your yeah, slide yeah true true i am i was thinking that it is visible uh, one one second just i am converting into pdf and then uh, let me share the pdf sure 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 not a problem take your time i think we we that that's it's okay so technical glitch Uh, I'll just wait backstage. Okay. Apologies for the uh, interruption in between.
it is i don't know it is again moving i am now she trying to see at the pdf but again there is a problem just simply loading but let's continue with the session i think it's okay we, we can share the you know maybe the pdf version of this slide can you see now can you see now no no not yet it's okay it's okay let's continue i think we we can we can uh, you know, so sh then it. should i should i send you my ppt uh, probably later, you can share it with me later I, i'll share it with the audience basically so they they'll actually oh uh, here it is it is showing me that fail to uh, yeah i am getting some error like fail to show your screen this kind of error i am getting uh, it, it, now is it visible no na no no not yet it's okay it's okay let, let, let you continue your thought i mean the, the talk and then we'll we'll share the uh, audio, the the deck with the audience basically the pdf file later not an issue okay i don't know what happened <laughs> technical glitches no worries no, please can it's getting recorded yeah it's it's getting recorded so it's not a problem so we'll we'll get it okay okay, okay but otherwise i can try uh, log into from other computer should i do that No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Done. It's okay. Please, please, please continue your fin your your session. Yeah, yeah. We will, will, will go to the papers basically. I'll share the papers link basically with them. No worries. Yeah, because paper. This slide is uh, so important. Yeah, I don't know why it is not visible. Okay. Uh, it's okay. I I think I think with that can be handled. Not not an issue. Please, so you can you can see read out the numbers basically that you have, and then probably we'll we'll do that. Okay. Okay. Can you can you drop the PDF in the chat box right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can send to Prashad just now. Can yes. I should I send? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have I have shared. Okay, Prashad. Uh, we'll take. Yeah, it. I have shared. I have shared to Prasad. So Prasad will share this uh, with the audience. Uh, let me just check. Second. Yeah, you can continue. Yeah, you continue, please. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, okay. Doctor Saha, can you please, oh, oh, you know, switch on your video and uh, mic? I'll I'll put you back on the stage. Oh, okay, 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 yeah, please. Okay, yeah, please. Yeah, and I'll I'll go back from the stage. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, should I start? Okay. Yeah. So I hope my uh, I am audible. Yeah. Okay. Somehow I am not able to load my screen. Okay. Anyway. So uh, basically, I was uh, talking about this dialogue act classification. and now uh, there is a uh, another component which is called the tweet act classification so tweet act classification is basically to understand the communicative intention of the tweets so when we are when suppose a person is tweeting what is the basically communicative intention between of the of the tweets so that is called the tweet act classification so you know speech act classification helps in determining the communicative intention of a speaker and this holds true for discussion in any fora including social media platform such as twitter and tweet act classification basically helps in determining the community with intention of a tweet so like if there is a tweet called my dream is to have my boat returned to me rashid said i have been wishing to die every second after my boat died so this is an example of a expression 
then why the Lee Guyen title in the gallery? This is a kind of a question. So basically here again, we have relied on the multimodal information. So we are not only using the textual content, but we also we are seeing the uh, emojis present in the tweet. Because sometimes the, you, if you can consider the emoji, then we can better understand the communicative intention of the user. And also it is a multitask classification problem. So our understanding is that uh, if we solve the Twitter classification and the, uh, and the emotion detection together, then maybe it would be better to understand the communicative intention. So, uh, so basically here we have proposed a multimodal multitask framework for Twitter classification where Twitter classification is our primary task and the sentiment analysis and the emotion recognition are our auxiliary task. So our uh, assumption is that uh, the you know, emotional state and the sentiment of the speaker can help us in better understanding the tweet act. So uh, basically we developed a multitasking and multimodal architecture where tweet act classification is the primary task and the sentiment, recognition, sentiment analysis and the emotion recognition are the auxiliary task. So we again created a new data set which is called the emo TA where there are with high quality annotations of tweet act classifications including emotionally added cues for facilitating research in multimodal TSC. So basically, uh, there is a data set called the Semival 2018. So this data set Semival 2018 was annotated with the sentiment and the emotion levels. And this data set is having tweets and the emojis. So now we have manually annotated this data set with the seven tweet act categories, which are statement, expression, question, request, suggestion, threat, and the others. And basically we have used the, so this, uh, basically this way, we have created a data set which is having three levels, tweet act, emotion, and the sentiment. So uh, this data set is having 6810 number of tweets with the corresponding standard, gold standard tweet act and the multi-level emotion levels. And there are two you know, modalities available, text and the emoji. So we again developed a deep learning based architecture. So where, you know, input is the tech tweet and then uh, in the, there are some feature extractors. And then finally, there are three types of classification. We are trying to identify the tweet act. We are trying to identify the sentiment present in the tweet and also the emotion of the tweet. So three tasks are simultaneously solved, but the primary task is the tweet act classification and the auxiliary task are sentiment analysis and the emotion recognition. And uh, we, uh, we, uh, I am not able to show you the results. So we, uh, we have done an ablation study of all the of the different combinations. So we have varied our architecture and we have also varied the different modality combinations. And our results illustrate that uh, in, yes, indeed, uh, when we are using the multimodality and also when we are doing the multitasking, like we take classification, sentiment and emotion together, then we are able to achieve the uh, best F F1 score and the accuracy. So uh, nowadays we are also working on developing a persuasive dialogue agent. So you know if you see the existing dialogue systems like uh, they, those are mostly question answering type of systems. So they are capable of solving a particular user task. But sometimes maybe what user want users basically the, uh, the task goal may not match with the database. So what basically suppose in a sales uh, in a sales category if there is a sales agent Suppose user wanted to say wants to buy a particular product, but the description given by the particular user is not available in the database. In that case, uh, basically the existing dialogue systems will terminate the conversation. But we are trying to develop a dynamic goal-oriented content, uh, goal-oriented di dialogue system, which will try to uh, convince the user with some alternative goal, which is very close to the original goal. So basically that is the thing that now user is starting with a predefined task goal, but maybe that goal is not available in the database. In that case, we can dynamically set the goal. So basically the virtual agent can help um, the user to uh, change the goal and can basically somehow convince the user to basically, to basically take that particular dynamic goal. So a goal that exactly corresponds to one of the underlying databases. So this is the co cooperative and a persuasive behavior. So, and also this virtual agent or the sales agent is capable of uh, extracting information from the multimodal input. Like when it is conversing with the user, either user can provide the input in terms of textual information or the user can also show some images to convey some information. 
So the virtual agent is capable of extracting information from the user, from the text or in the, from the image. So basically here our contribution is that we are proposing a novel framework for dialogue policy learning, which utilizes a multimodal data enabled state representation. So basically our natural language understanding module is capable enough to extract information from the textual data as well as from the multimodal input like from the image. And then uh, there is a uh, there is a markup decision process. So this markup decision process is basically co is controlling the dialogue manager. So dialogue manager is basically mapping the dialogue state into a action, and then action can be translated into a uh, translated by a natural language generation module. So we again developed a large scale annotated and multimodal dialogue data set. So um, where we have uh, users are expressing their inputs through images or through text. So we have created this particular data set and the domain is basically the electronic domain and there are two tasks phone information and the phone booking in this particular data set we have 1000 number of dialogues and number of utterances are 8335 and number of we have also we are also maintaining a knowledge base so in the knowledge base we are having uh, 2697 number of samples and the number of attributes of each phone is having 18 an example of attributes are the brand, RAM, color, etc. And image categories are color, brand, style, shape, type, etc. So we are also in nowadays we are also developing a virtual agent for uh, towards building a diagnosis system. So medical diagnosis, we want to make it automated by the use of a virtual agent. So basically, you know that when when a particular patient visits a hospital patient is having his own self report like there will be a self report where patients used to mention about the problem that he or she is suffering from that is called the chief complaint now based on the chief complaint uh, there used to be a doctor a uh, junior doctor who used to ask for further some further uh, questions to the patient to understand more knowledge about the symptoms the patient is basically suffering from and then based on this, this is called the symptom investigation. And after the symptom investigation, basically there is a disease prediction. So can we somehow automate this system investigation, symptom investigation process by virtual agent? So can a virtual agent, um, can, can a virtual agent replace a junior doctor for the symptom investigation and then predict a, predict a disease? So this is basically called the automatic diagnosis system. And now we are working with a with basically AIMS doctor and we are trying to make it automated by a virtual agent. So this virtual agent uh, will have many components like it will have a disease classification component and then it will basically it will also try to you know based on the symptom context it will try to ask some further symptom information from the customer or from the patient. So basically uh, diagnosis process deals with exponential state space does a trivial mapping of symptom set to disease seems intractable. So we propose a novel knowledge infused context driven text oriented virtual agent for autonomous disease diagnosis. So to enhance context aware knowledge based symptom research resulting in relevant symptom investigation accurate diagnosis. So our task is to develop a virtual agent which can uh, basically replace the junior doctor and can collect different symptoms relevant symptoms and this relevant symptoms can be given to the disease classifier and the disease classifier will ultimately uh, basically diagnosis the correct disease. So this is basically called a, this particular project is called a knowledge infused context driven dialogue agent for disease diagnosis using hierarchical reinforcement learning. So these are the some tasks that currently our, our uh, research team is doing in the field of uh, dialogue systems. So we are working on developing some persuasive dialogue system uh, where which is capable of taking information from in multimodal form. Then we are also working for developing some automatic diagnosis system using virtual agents. And also we have started working on developing some, you know, motivational dialogue systems. So suppose uh, there are many, uh, you know, the users who are suffering from some medical, um, some mental illness. So can we develop a virtual agent? which can try to motivate the users uh, with the so basically this is this is called the motivational dialogue system so we, we have also started working towards that and the main challenge was to collect a data set so we are now working to in association with some uh, with, uh, with some hospitals to develop our own conversational data sets 
which are motivational in nature and then maybe we can that can help us in developing some motivational dialogue systems so apart from this uh, as i mentioned this multimodal information processing is having huge applications in summarization so summarization is another important task of natural language processing and you know so people are mostly focusing on the textual summarization where we have a set of uh, text and then we used to generate a summary but now all this uh, we, you know that nowadays multimodal input is very common like in the newspapers we have the images as well as the textual information so can those image information also help in producing a better summary so this is called the multimodal summarization where input is collected from text image audios and the uh, videos and then you we, we would like to develop a summary so this summary will also have different components a textual summary a image summary a video summary etc so basically you know this multimodal summarization is nowadays very, becoming very popular and my uh, uh, many of my students are basically focusing uh, on developing different models for multimodal summarization so this uh, summarization we named as uh, text image video summarization so we are in the input we have a set of documents we have a set of images we have a set of videos and our task is to generate a multimodal summary where we have a text summary in the output image summary in the output and the video summary in the output so input in the input side we have text image and the videos in the output side also we have the text summary image summary and the video summary so we also created a data set uh, with the existing data set contains 25 topics each topic is comprising of 20 text documents per topic 3 to 9 images per topic 3 to 8 videos per topic and 3 uh, text references per topic but this data set was not having multimodal summary so uh, this data set was uh, in, the, in the input side there were multimodal inputs but in the output there was only text summary so we have enhanced this data set and we have manually uh, added some images in the output summary as well so basically we have prepared a multimodal data set for solving this multimodal summarization problem and then we have used a integer linear programming framework and also a multi object optimization based framework for solving the uh, this multimodal summarization problem so we basically pose this uh, problem uh, as a summarization as an optimization problem so where our task is to select a subset of sentences or a subset of images to generate the multimodal summary so that is the uh, our, our our proposed approach for the multimodal summarization so yes so uh, i am very sorry uh, that i could not share the slides uh, no worries, no, i think no worries that was lovely talking i mean that talk that you gave i mean a lot of insight hidden in it, in it regarding dialogue system the dialogue act classification the auxiliary task of emotion and then the tweet, uh, tweet act classifier i think and then the virtual assistant for the healthcare that you mentioned i think they, these are like very uh, key areas uh, you know, i think that that, that people, the audience will be definitely benefited with and it's, it is something that is related with uh, the kind of work that we also do dialogue systems basically goal oriented marco decision processes basically so I, I, I'm sure a lot of people will be able to relate with what you just said. And uh, when we share the research paper with them, I think the audience here is primarily the, uh, you know, the, 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 the people who are interested in uh, data science or machine learning or NLP particularly. In NLP particularly, dialogue systems. I think this is a very relevant content that you have delivered today. So I think, I think this is a very, very good uh, uh, you know, session. Let me just check if we have any questions right now. Yeah, I am very uh, sorry. I don't know what happened with my computer. I was not able to share because I really prepared a very good slide. Like you will, you would have appreciated. Like it was, it would have been very good if you can also show the slides. But I don't know what happened because. Yeah, uh, initially it was it, it it was there and suddenly yeah. it just dropped. Some some technical glitch. It's okay. Okay. I think I. Uh, there must be something. So I think uh, the one one uh, question that I had in mind, uh, if, you'll, if you'll allow me to ask. Uh, so it was like the kind of, you know, like uh, when you uh, make the multimodal uh, experiments, information processing, especially in the emo emo emotion uh, recognition in a dialogue. Uh, and if it is only telephony and, uh, you know, like the transcript that we generate out of telephony, if we keep that, because in, on let's say on telephony calls, there is no uh, visual data coming in, right? 
so how do we i mean do you have do you have some sort of insight on that ki uh, what what works what doesn't work if we if we work on the multimodal side excluding video how how are the results impacted yes 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 so as i mentioned so in our work somehow the audio modality was not helping we, but that is because somehow we were using some pretend models like open smile was a pretend model we were not basically we are not expert in audio processing so we just use this pretend mm -hmm. models to extract some relevant features from the audio signals but my understanding is that this that tone features play a very major role like when you are trying to understand okay. the severity like suppose somebody is talking about the phone also what is the severity mm -hmm. of the problem like in case of health care so what mm -hmm. whether uh, i am very much serious about a particular symptom or not that can be easily understood from my voice signals like my tone mm -hmm. so like mm -hmm. you know so basically i my feeling is this audio signals are very much important and especially the tone if you can somehow understand the tone and analyze the tone then that can give mm -hmm. us more information or more clue in text processing so we can basically okay, based on the yes yeah, I think the, in the multitasking setup, if we just add all these things together, like dialogue act, uh, you know, like the intents, plots, emotions, intonation, we plug them together and then maybe then run an experiment. I think that will be really uh, yeah. you know, a good thing to see because we tried in our lab also, we also tried uh, doing uh, emotion uh, tracking in dialogues in a goal oriented setup basically. Uh, multi-model setup. So what we observed was like when we, the, you know, like when we tried to, I, I think the same problem. We use also we also use open smile. So uh, the, when we were using the text only, um, uh, you know, like the corpus, then the results were roughly around like you know 73, 74 percent. But when we added uh, the audio, so it actually deteriorated rather than improvement. It was actually deteriorating. So we were kind of like the worried, like, you know, how, how what exactly is going on? But I, I think that that's very rightly that you pointed out the pretending pretend models probably impacted the results. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that is also our findings. But logically, if you think from the problem, like like from your theoretical point, of view, the, the audio signal should help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the hypothesis. That was the hypothesis. Yeah. That actually the the pronunciation model and the tonality speech rate these are some of the variables basically which can be taken into account when we are actually trying to get the severity for example when people are in medical uh, you know uh, setup basically somebody let's say somebody is, uh, is in a problem and is calling the hospital the the, the, the speech rate is, will generally be faster you know like because people are in rush so if you can relate, and then there can be multiple such classifications, basically, multiple such uh, categories, which can be identified. So I think that's a very, very good uh, insight. I think I, I, that that actually brings me to the point that we, I think we should definitely, uh, you know, like interact with. Uh, yeah, you know, sure. To, because to, uh, we have yeah. in recent years our focus is on multimodal processing only because whatever mm -hmm. task we are doing like not only dialogue systems like currently we are also working on the complaint detection so mm -hmm. in the, for the social media you mm -hmm. automatically detecting whether the person is it is a complaint or what type of complaint what is the severity of the complaint so okay. that also we are doing the uh, multimodal like uh, suppose i am not happy with the phone so maybe i have i have shown a picture of the phone that say this is mm -hmm. broken so uh, that time, basically, from the image, you can easily understand which portion of the text is more important to you. Which, so basically, true. you know, and also explainability. Like if you see the image, then maybe you can better explain your output. True. Like, you know, but towards the explainability, image can give you a better, better clue. I think I think this is where the cognitive side of the you know, linguistics and the cognitive cognitive science, basically how the how human brain actually uh, perceives the perception uh, how, how you think perception is built that's come into play because uh, you know like th this is the this is the real play basically where things actually happen uh, because if the perception is not right i mean image you know the, when we say dog immediately in our ma mind we have a dog multiple images of dog right yeah and when we see somebody dog it's a ranking algorithm which is working so similarly if, if the explainability basically increases uh, if we actually add the image, that's one of the findings basically that even we, we, we kind of found it. So that's, I think uh, that's a really good uh, thing. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think, so what, what, is there any some kind of work more particularly related to uh, linguistics and, um, you know, cognitive science at, at Patna in your lab? Are you, are you guys also uh, planning to start or are, are you guys already doing? Uh, so, uh not see, linguistics are always there like you know the what kind of features we are extracting so if you want to interpret those features then you need to have a linguistic knowledge yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So for the explainability, you should have a linguistic model, model knowledge. But mostly we are focusing on this deep learning models. And uh, in recent years only, we have started doing uh, working on this explainability part. So right. how to make the models more explainable or mm-hmm. whatever be the decisions of these deep learning models, can we somehow explain the decisions? Like yeah, this if has you been, this are... has been a very good research area. Explainable, explainable AI has been a really good area in the last couple of years that has emerged on its yeah. own. How to yeah, make AI, AI models more interpretable, more explainable. Yeah. More explainable because you know people are nowadays focusing on the green AI or the green machine learning. So where green NLP, so where it is necessary, you know, you, what, what the machine is do simply like a black box, we should not use the machines. True. We should also try to understand what exactly is going behind that. So for True. that, we need the linguistic knowledge because mm-hmm. linguistic knowledge can help us in understanding the text part. We need the image processing knowledge to understand what kind of features are extracted from the images. So all the signal processing knowledge is required to understand the audio signal. So basically, it's a combination of uh, multiple fields, linguistics, true, image true. processing, signal processing, all together. I, th- I think the, this is where, uh, you know, like uh, from what I, what I, uh, in my observation and what I have, uh, you know, like my work, uh, my team's work has uh, gone. I think this is where we, we, the, the way we are multi-model information processing is actually pushing us towards the brain computing interface, basically, True. if you see, if you, if yeah. you see so, because uh, we are trying to replicate the uh, di- different senses inside machine, uh, visual side, uh, auditory side, written forms basically and trying to get it a uh, more holistic picture of the uh, data point basically or experience or an event basically that, that we can say in terms of data basically so uh, i think uh, you know like um, uh, brain imaging basically has, has also been part of it so do you think that some sort of um, you know in, in iit patna I mean, i'm curious actually uh, try to understand is there particularly is there a lab or is there a particular set of group of people uh, for focusing in uh, on cognitive sciences and the brain computing interfaces also not we have not yet started but that is our future plan like we have a group on ai nlp ml so that group mm-hmm. is basically you know that group is working on this multimodal processing and also this deep learning uh, net, uh, like this in natural language processing so we're using this mm-hmm. cognitive signals but uh, yeah but i think we need to further explore this area but because this is very emerging and in future we would like to explore this area but yeah we are exploring in terms of this multimodal processing audio video signals but yeah but we, I, I think better exploration is required True, true. I think I think what you said totally made sense, and I think what what you're doing today, I mean, multimodal information processing. I think that will, uh, if if you are able to solve this problem, this will pave the way for further, you know, for more cognitively aware machines, basically. Exactly. Right? And in the you know in the Indian context, there is no such work. Like if you see this multimodal processing, there is no work in the Indian data sets also. Like we really would like to true. extend these works for the Indian languages as well. I think that is where we can collaborate. I think I see a very uh, good synergy to collaborate with your sure. lab, actually. I am, welcome. So will... I am always ready. Like you, please give me, <laughs> if there will be any possibility, just let me know. I, I would be happy to be a part of this. Sure, sure. I think I think that I'll, 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 after the event, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll drop your note and I'll, I'll separately connect with this. But uh, for in this in the context of this event thank you thank you for taking time time out and sharing your work and you know enlightening the you know audience here most of them they are students industry professionals who who want to get into you know because people generally see chatbots and chatbots it is not just chatbot it's like it's a it's a whole subject it's a study you know it's a and there are multiple ongoing research problems so i think the, the, your talk has definitely you know threw a lot of light and uh, on on the emerging problems inside the conversational ai space and i think uh, that will be very helpful uh, thank you thank, thank you thank you, thank you. and i am very sorry for this technical problems but yeah i am no, 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 very no. happy to be a part of this thanks a lot for the invitation Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you very much. Okay. Bye-bye.